Hi, my name is Robert Feranek. I'm from Fedevel Academy. And in this video, I'm going to promote myself. <laughs> now, I don't want you to think about this video this way. Uh, I just would like to highlight uh, this uh, podcast. And uh, this podcast is basically basically interview where I was interviewed with Peter Dalmaris. So yes, this video may look like I'm promoting uh, my own interview. Um, yeah, I guess it is kind of promotion, but I do it because uh, I think this interview was uh, quite good. It, I really like this interview and we were speaking uh, with Peter about many different topics and uh, maybe you can find it also interesting. In this video, I will only play a small part from this interview, the part where we were speaking about auto routing and uh, board uh, reliability. But if you like, you can uh, then listen the whole interview here on this uh, URL. I will post this link under this uh, video on the YouTube. I'm not sure if you know uh, Peter Dalmaris. He is well known on Udemy. He has over 80,000 students and he creates uh, courses and tutorials a lot about the Arduino and I've seen also he does some videos about KiCad. So if you like, have a look also on Peter's uh, courses and tutorials and also on his uh, website. Okay. Uh, that's everything for introduction. Let's uh, listen or let's watch uh, a little bit of this interview where I was uh, speaking about the auto routing and board reliability. Here it is. Do you prefer manually routing, especially those large boards, or going for auto router, or perhaps a combination of the two? Okay, uh, I have. I, once I, I, uh, I really didn't have time to uh, route a board, so I use auto router. <laughs> and uh, after uh, setting up like uh, all these constants and rules, uh, I was setting it like for one week. And then I, I hit this uh, auto route button. It started doing all the stuff and uh, it did not finish the board. <laughs> so it did like a partial route and were yeah. you able to finish it or was it like a mess and you uh, had to start again? It was not able to connect all the all the <laughs> yeah. pins. So I had to do it. Uh, I mentioned this because uh, the result was kind of catastrophic. <laughs> <laughs> so not even bad, it was, it was like terrible. Uh, yeah, it was. It wouldn't work. Uh, it it did work, but I would never uh, uh, send this board into production to sell it to I don't know thousands of people. It's kind. It was kind of board which is okay to have it on your uh, table in your lab, but never send it out as a product. Okay, that was what I expected you to say. Actually, I, I find that experience that at least with the Arduino and I, I build boards that work with the Arduino low speeds, nothing dense in there. The auto router really does save time and really it has no effect. The end result is still still works. But I always thought that, you know, once you get to those um, higher densities, uh, more complicated boards, uh, you do need to put some more thought into yeah. how signals are transmitted. And the auto router doesn't care about that. The auto router just tries to minimize the length, uh, the, the length of the total routes and the number of vias and things like that. So it's kind of stupid, right? Uh, the, the criteria that you use are totally different uh, to what the auto router uses. In the auto router, what I was using, I think it was called Spectra. You can set yeah. all the kind of rules, but the problem is more rules you set, uh, less chance is it is going to actually uh, finish the layout. Finish it. And uh, the board, uh, what was auto routed, it was, I said, it was kind of uh, working, 
The question, uh, when you are designing this kind of very complex boards, the question is uh, stability and uh, reliability of this board. So you need to be sure the board will be running with no problems for months, for years. Yeah. Yeah. And this yep. is extremely, uh, this requires uh, to be extremely careful how you route the trucks. Because uh, many engineers, even now I was, uh, I have forum and uh, one of the person is saying like, I have this board which is uh, on my uh, fridge and it occasionally freezes like once a week and mm. or two two times a week. And uh, I have same board, uh, three same boards uh, in different places in my house and they work just perfectly fine. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Right. If you design Thank the you, board yeah. correctly, it should be always stable. If, if so you think that uh, there's some interference perhaps uh, from exactly. other components of the fridge that cause a problem? Uh, it doesn't have to be only the fridge. It's, it's uh, something what is too sensitive and right. uh, or uh, it may be some situations which may happen occasionally like I don't know on the board you can have two signals which are routed together and sometimes happen that uh, these uh, signals on these two tracks uh, they may have some kind of combination which can cause problem on the third signal which is routed together with them or something like this yeah. so uh, the electrons get confused <laughs> exactly so this is what uh, what I think is big difference between like professionally design, uh, professional design and the kind of uh, hobbyist design. Like yeah, exactly. uh, I, I had exactly the same approach when I was starting with hardware design. Like uh, I was like, oh, this board occasionally freezes, but it's it's work. The board works perfectly most fine. Of the time. Yeah, most of the time it's, <laughs> it's just fine. It's just once a week it freezes. If you design the board properly, it it cannot freeze. It just has to work. If it freezes, it means there is something wrong. Yeah. Oh. So that's uh, that's a big difference between, as you said, um, professional design and more laid, laid back and hobbyist design, which now when, when I design something, it's really for me. I design something that will sit on my desk and pretty much nobody else's desk. So the, the criteria are very different than the quality, you know, effort that I put in. Yeah. It's totally different to if I was going to sell it out into the open market or you know, share it in the open market. Yeah. I can give an so, example. I remember, sorry for interrupting, but I remember this, yeah, no, good. this good story. Oh, no, it's not like story, but I remember this from, uh, uh, from one of our customers. They were buying uh, one of the boards what uh, was designed before I actually joined the company. And there was this occasional interrupt, like once a month interrupt. But the thing with the company was that they were using this board in huge machines. And uh, if something like this happened, they had to stop all production and clean all the machines. So one occasional interrupt once a month caused like, or cost them like thousands or tens of thousands of dollars because they had to stop production and clean all the machines just because of this one random interrupt. Yep. And uh, that's everything for today's video. Let me know what do you think about these topics? What, uh, what is your experience with auto routing? Uh, if you would like to know more, because I was actually planning to create uh, a video about auto routing. It didn't go very well. <laughs> Uh, I was planning to create a video about the uh, active router and about this kind of uh, options also in Cadence, in Altium. I didn't get the results what uh, I would like to show you. So I think this auto routing stuff is still not ready to be widely used in this very complex board. But I would like to know what do you think? Leave the comments and also uh, let me know what is your experience with uh, board reliability. What kind of stories you have about this reliable or unreliable board. Leave in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, if you like these topics, please don't forget to press like button. And if you would like to listen to the whole podcast, whole interview, then you can go and uh, check this link. Thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.